Today I'm going to teach you how to play Ogdoadic Rika. The new Rika engine gives reptiles some crazy new combo lines. And today we're going to learn 5 new combos that you need to know if you want to play Ogdoadics. What's up team? Welcome back to another in-depth review. Get ready to shed all your worries as we slither our way into the best new way to play snakes. The Ogdoadic engine was previously known for having lots of extenders, but no real bosses to end on, besides ending on Cosmic Slicer. Reptiles are arguably the most neglected type in Yu-Gi-Oh, but thankfully the Konami gods great us with the new Rika archetype, which greatly increased the power and versatility of reptile decks, including Ogdoatics. Now we're about to learn exactly how to combo with Rika in just a moment, so keep watching, but first we need to get familiar with what each of the new Rika cards do, and what other cards we can use to support our strategy. Now let's take a look at these cards. Our first new card is Rika no Marikube. It's a level 1 earth plant, and you can special summon this card from your hand by sending one insect, plant, or reptile monster from your hand to the graveyard. You can only special summon Rika no Marikube once per turn this way. Also, if this card is normal or special summoned, you can add up to two Rika cards with different names that are banished and or in your deck to your hand, except itself. Then banish one card from your hand, but you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn, except insect, plant, or reptiles. Marikube is a great one card starter, as in combination with the other Rikas, it easily allows you to link climb into a link 4. The fact that you can special summon it as well is actually amazing, because as you'll soon see in the combos, there's a certain other card that you'll want to save your normal summon for. Its only downside is it not being a reptile in a deck that can sometimes lock you into reptiles, but there are plenty ways to play around that as you're going to see. Make sure you always run this at 3. Our second new card is Raika no Yahazu Kamakiri. He's a level 3 light insect, and you can special summon this card from your hand by placing one of your banished insect plant or reptile monsters on the bottom of the deck. If this card is sent to the graveyard as material for the link summon of a Raika monster, you can target one level 4 lower plant, insect, or reptile monster in your graveyard, except itself. Special summon it in defense position. This cool looking cockroach works amazing in this deck, as you will most likely have more than enough banished reptiles in order to special summon him. On top of that, it can revive any reptile when used as link material for a summon of a Rika, which allows you to bring back Ogdoatic combo pieces from Grave, which again you'll have plenty of. Despite being very easy to set up, especially with the previous card, it's not a card you really want to open as it can brick. Instead, you'll simply search this as part of your main combos, which is why you play only one. Also, this confirms the existence of Flying Kamakiri lore which is absolutely based because that card is broken. Our last main deck monster is Raika no Yoroi Tokaje. He's a level 4 dark reptile, and you can special summon him from hand by banishing one insect, plant, or reptile monster from graveyard, but you can only special summon him once per turn this way. Also, you can discard one insect, plant, or reptile monster, then target one face-up monster your opponent controls, return it to the hand, and you can only use this effect once per turn. Tokaje is one of the few reptile monsters in the game that have a removal effect. It's extremely easy to summon in Ogdoatics, and on top of that it doesn't lock you into summoning insects, plants, and reptiles like our previous cards did, meaning you're free to use this any way you'd like. When it comes to the Rika strategy on its own, this one has the least utility out of the bunch, but when it comes to Ogdoatics or reptiles, this card is absolutely one of your best extenders. I prefer to run it at 2 due to reptiles lack of removal, but the deck can still function if you run it at 1. Now Rikas come with 4 new link monsters. For the sake of not making this video too long, I'm going to only focus on their unique effects, as opposed to the ones they all share. They all have the same summoning requirement of needing X amount of monsters including at least one insect plant or reptile, which makes them semi-generic. They can also all be summoned from the graveyard by returning an insect, plant, or reptile from your field to the bottom of the deck, but they lock you into only summoning those types for the rest of the turn. Raika no Musha do Kuro is a Link 2 fire plant with 1600 attack, and it lets you once per turn special summon a Raika monster from your graveyard. Raika no Ugami Nushi is a Link 3 wind insect with 2300 attack, and it lets you banish any combination of two insect, plant, or reptiles from graveyard in order to search any Raika trap from deck which there's currently only one. Raika no Kusarigami is a Link 4 Fire Reptile with 2900 attack. If your opponent activates a monster effect, you can make it so neither player can activate monster effects in the hand for the rest of the turn. And lastly, Raika no Dayuga is a beefy Link 5 Earth Insect with 3300 attack. If your opponent special summons a monster from deck or extra deck, you can destroy any two monsters on the field. The Link 2 and Link 3 are good cards meant to extend your plays by reviving a monster or searching disruption. The Link 4 Floodgate effect comes off as really specific at first, and until you realize almost every deck has at least one hand extender. Snake Eyes, Bestials, and Fire Kings are just a few examples of the decks it can hit. Also, it has the unique status of being only the fourth reptile link monster ever created. Last but not least, the Link 5 has a great non-targeting disruption effect. A non-targeting treacherous trap hole effect sounds great at first, but it's quite annoying that it forces you to destroy two monsters, making it feel restrictive at times. But it is one of the only extra deck removal options you have access to, and 3300 attack is absolutely no joke. So now that we know what our new 
cards do, let's see what they're actually capable of. We're gonna get right into our combo guide. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and leave a comment letting me know if you find these videos useful. Now let's learn how to reptile all over people. Alright team, it's only fitting that we start with the card that literally depicts people with reptiles all over them. It should come as no surprise that Snake Rain is still the best one card combo that reptiles have access to. But now in addition to that, we're gonna use it to access our entire Rika engine. All you need for this combo is Snake Rain plus any discard. We're gonna start off by activating Snake Rain. This will allow you to discard any card in your hand to mill 4 reptile monsters. Now this is very important. The 4 go-to reptiles that you'll always mill off Snake Rain are Nunu, Naya, Curse, and Night Sword Serpent. These 4 reptiles get your entire combo going. Now Night Sword Serpent is gonna trigger in Graveyard to special summon itself. We're gonna go ahead and special summon Night Sword Serpent. Now we're going to activate Curse in Graveyard, tributing the Night Sword Serpent in order to special summon itself. Now once you summon Curse, Curse is going to trigger to summon Naya from Grave. Naya will activate on summon to search you any Ogdoatic spell or trap. Use this effect to search out Ogdoatic Daybreak. Now before we do anything with that, we're going to activate Nunu in Grave. Nunu's effect allows it to special summon itself if you control an Ogdoatic, which means now we're going to have two level 4s on board. Overlay the Nunu and the Noya to go into King of the Feral Imps. King of the Feral Imps is a soft once per turn, search any reptile from deck. This is very important. We're going to use this effect to search Serpentine Princess. We play Serpentine Princess as a one of combo piece and you're going to see why in just a minute, but for now keep in mind that you want to always try to save your normal summon for Serpentine Princess as much as possible. Now after we add Princess, we're going to activate Ogdoatic Daybreak in order to allow us to summon 4 Ogdoatic tokens to our field. This effect is absolutely nuts. Now we're going to Link Summon using King of the Feral Imps and two of the tokens in order to go into Cosmic Slicer. Cosmic Slicer Zeral is the best boss monster reptiles have access to at the moment. On Summon, it's going to activate to search any card that has an effect to add A counters. Use this effect to add Planet Pollutant Virus to hand. Once you do that, use the two remaining tokens on the field to Link Summon into your Link 2 Raika no Musha Dokuro. Once you Link Summon, activate Daybreak's second effect in Graveyard, banishing itself in order to return one of your banished reptiles to death and then immediately send any reptile from deck to graveyard. In this variation, you're going to send Raika no Yoroi Tokaje to graveyard. Now at this point, you're going to activate your Link 2 Raika, which is going to allow you to special summon the Tokaje that you just sent to graveyard. Now use Tokaje and your Link 2 to go into your Link 3 Ogami Nushi. Ogami Nushi can activate now to banish any two reptiles from graveyard in order to search for your Raika Trap. The Raika Trap is great disruption, as it'll allow you to target cards your opponent controls up to the number of insect plant reptile link monsters you control and destroy them. At this point, since you didn't use your normal summon yet, you're going to go ahead and normal summon Serpentine Princess. Activate your Link 2 Raika's effect in Graveyard in order to return Serpentine Princess to deck and then special summon the Link 2 from Grave. This is an extremely important play. Serpentine Princess will trigger whenever it's returned to the deck in order to special summon any level 3 or lower monster in the game from your deck. Use this effect to immediately special summon your Raika no Marikube. Marikube now is going to get your entire Raika engine going. Use this effect to add Raika Kamikiri from deck in addition to the new Raika continuous spell and then immediately banish Kamikiri. Now I'm going to tell you what the spell does in a moment, but first we're going to Link Summon using Marikube in Ugama Nushi as material in order to go into our new Link 4 Raika Kusarigami. Once you Link Summon your Link 4, activate the Raika spell. The spell is amazing. It increases all our monsters attack by 300 while decreasing our opponents by the same amount. Also once per turn we can choose to add any Raika monster from from deck, or instead we can special summon any Raika monster that's banished or in our graveyard. In this variation, we're going to use it for its second effect. This is going to allow us to special summon the Kamakiri that we just banished. Once you special summon Kamakiri, Link Summon using itself and Kusarigami to go into your Link 5, Raika no Dayuga. Dayuga is going to allow us to destroy any two monsters on the field whenever our opponent special summons from deck or extra deck. Since we used Kamakiri to Link Summon, it's going to trigger to revive any reptile in our graveyard. In this variation, you can revive any reptile, it doesn't matter. Now activate your Link 4's effect in Graveyard in order to return the Link 2 to Extra Deck and then Special Summon itself. The reason we're doing this is because we need two reptiles on field to make our last play. Use the reptile that you just revived plus the Link 4 that you also just revived in order to Link Summon into your Link 2 Alien Shock Trooper. Once you do this, set the two trap cards in your hand and end your turn. The reason we have to go into Shock Trooper in this variation is because as soon as it's our opponent's turn, we're going to 
to activate the planet pollutant virus to tribute the shock trooper, which will place A counters on every single monster our opponent summons for the next 3 turns. This is how we're going to completely lock our opponent out of using monster effects on the field for 3 turns. Because Cosmic Slicer Zero says monsters our opponent controls with A counters cannot activate their effects and are all changed to defense position. And then on top of that we can destroy 2 monsters with the Diuga, plus 2 additional cards with the trap. Ogdoatic and Rika actually really synergize with each other. This next combo is extremely important. You're not always going to open Snake Rain, but you don't need it because there's plenty of things you can do without it. To enter this combo line, you need to open Naya plus Marikube. Start off by activating Naya in hand in order to discard herself, and then send a curse from deck to graveyard. Once you do that, you're going to go ahead and normal summon Marikube. Marikube is going to activate in order to add the Kamakiri and the Tokaji to your hand, and then you're going to immediately banish the Tokaji. Now that you have a banished reptile, you can go ahead and summon Kamakiri by returning Tokaji to deck. At this point you're going to use Kamakiri and Marikube to link summon into your Link 2 Raika. Kamakiri is going to trigger because it was used as material in order to special summon your Naya from Grave. Once you special summon Naya, she's going to activate to add the Daybreak to your hand. Now activate your Link 2 Raika's effect in order to revive one of your Raikas. Use the Raika that you just revived in addition to the Link 2 in order to link summon your Link 3 Ogami Nushi. The Link 3 is going to banish two Raikas from your graveyard and then add your Raika trap. At this point you're going to activate Curse in order to tribute Naya in order to special summon himself, and then in addition special summon the Naya that you just tributed. Once you do this, immediately activate Daybreak to tribute Curse. By doing this, Daybreak is going to special summon 4 Ogdoatic tokens to your field. Special summon the tokens, and then once you do that, use 3 of the tokens to link summon into Cosmic Slicer. Cosmic Slicer is going to activate in order to add your planet pollutant virus. Once you add the virus, use Naya and your Link 3 in order to go into your Link for Rika. Now we're not done yet. Activate Daybreak's second effect in Graveyard in order to banish itself, returning one of your banished reptiles to your deck, and then immediately send Night Sword Serpent from deck to Graveyard. Night Sword Serpent will activate in order to special summon itself. Go ahead and special summon Night Sword Serpent, and then Link Summon using itself plus the remaining token in order to go into Alien Shock Trooper. So now with the virus and the Shock Trooper, you have your Alien Lock set up, which is going to prevent your opponent from activating monster effects on field, and on top of that, the Link Link 4 Rika is going to make it that your opponent can't activate any monster effects in hand as soon as they activate any monster effect. This means as soon as they activate any monster, from that point until the rest of the turn, the only place they'll be able to activate any monster effects is their graveyard. Their whole turn is going to be extremely restricted. And on top of all of that, we still have the Rika Trap, which will be able to destroy any one card our opponent controls. Now let's say you're not a big fan of the alien lock for whatever reason, or you want to end on a more aggressive end board, then there's a way to do that with the exact same cards that I just used, but we're going to end on a completely different end board with more disruption. Start off by opening Marikube and Naya. Activate Naya's effect, sending herself from hand to graveyard in order to send Curse from deck to graveyard. Then immediately after that, normal summon Marikube. Use Marikube's effect to add Kamakiri and Tokaje to hand, and then immediately banish Tokaje. Special summon Kamakiri by returning Tokaje to deck. Now you're going to Link Summon using your two monsters in order to go into your Link 2 Raika Nomusha Dokuro. Kamakiri is going to trigger because you used them as Link material for a Link Summon of a Raika in order to bring back the Naya that you discarded earlier. Now you Special Summon Naya. Naya will activate on Summon in order to add your Ogdoatic Daybreak to hand. However, in this variation, before you Summon Curse, use your Link 2 Raika's effect in order to bring back one of your Raikas from Graveyard. Now Link Summon using the monster that you just brought back plus your Link 2 in order to go into your Link 3 Ogama Nushi. Nushi is going to banish two monsters from your graveyard in order to add your Raika trap. Now keep watching because now we're going to activate Curse, tributing the Naya in order to special summon himself from graveyard. Once we special summon Curse, Curse is going to activate to special summon Naya. Once you do this, activate your Ogdoatic Daybreak. Ogdoatic Daybreak is going to allow you to tribute the Curse in order to special summon four Ogdoatic tokens. Special summon the tokens and then use one of the tokens plus your Link 3 in order to go into your Link 4 Kusari Immediately after you Link Summon the Link 4, use Naya plus the Link 4 in order to Link Summon your Raika no Dayuga. Once you get your Link 5 on field, activate Daybreak's second effect in Graveyard, banishing itself, returning one of your banished reptiles to death, sending Night Sword Serpent to Graveyard. Night Sword Serpent is going to activate
Blade in order to special summon itself, and now use two tokens plus Night Sword Serpent to go into Reptile Yan at Shidna. At this point, by the way, if your opponent had a monster on the field, you could change its attack to zero and search any reptile monster from your deck like an extender, but you're only locked into extra deck reptiles after that. However, in this variation, activate the Link 2 Rika's effect in Graveyard to return her immediately to the extra deck in order to special summon itself. You're about to see why we did this, but first we're gonna use our last two tokens to go into our another copy of Rika no Musha Dokuro. The whole purpose of this play is to have two Link 2 plant monsters on field, which now you're going to use to immediately Link Summon Bengalancer. Bengalancer will allow you to target bounce any monster your opponent controls during their turn. In addition, we have our Link 5 Rika no Dayuga, which will destroy any two monsters as soon as our opponent summons from deck or extra deck. In addition to the Rika Trap, which will destroy any two cards during our opponent's turn. That means in total, we will be able to get rid of five of our opponent's cards. In certain matchups, this combo is preferred over the Cosmic Slicer combo. Now you can actually perform the full Snake Rain combo from earlier, even if you don't actually open Snake Rain. All you need is just to open Nunu and Naya. Pause and replay this if you have to. You're going to start off by activating Nunu's effect in hand in order to discard herself and send the level 4 Raika Tokaje to Graveyard. After that, activate Naya's effect in hand, also discarding herself, this time sending Curse to Graveyard. Immediately after that, activate Nunu's effect in Graveyard in order to special summon herself. Now that you have a monster on the field, you can activate Curse's effect. Curse will tribute Nunu in order to special summon himself, and then on summon he's gonna activate in order to summon Naya. Once you special summon Naya, she'll activate on summon in order to add Ogdoadic Daybreak to hand. Once you add it, you're gonna immediately activate Ogdoadic Daybreak. This will let you tribute the Curse in order to special summon four Ogdoadic tokens to your field. Immediately use three of the tokens in order to link summon Cosmic Slicer Zeral. Zeral will activate on summon in order to add Planet Pollutant Virus. Now activate Daybreak's effect in Graveyard, returning a banished reptile to deck and also milling a reptile. Make sure you send Night Sword Serpent to Graveyard with this effect. Night Sword Serpent is going to trigger in Graveyard in order to special summon. Now that you have two level 4s on board, you can overlay into King of the Feral Imps. Activate King of the Feral Imps effect in order to detach a material and then add your one copy of Serpentine Princess to your hand. Now use your remaining token plus the King of the Feral Imps in order to go into your Link 2 Raika. Activate the Link 2's effect in order to revive the Tokaje that you milled earlier. Once you special summon Tokaje, immediately use it plus the Link 2 in order to Link summon your Ugama Nushi. Similar to the previous combos, Nushi is going to banish two monsters from your graveyard in order to add the Rika Trap. After you add the trap, go ahead and normal summon Serpentine Princess. Now you activate the Link 2's effect in graveyard in order to return the Serpentine Princess to death. This is going to allow you to special summon the Link 2 back. Now Serpentine Princess is going to trigger because it was returned to death in order to special summon any level 3 or lower monster from deck. Use this effect to go into Marikube. Summon Marikube and then it'll activate on summon in order to add Kamakiri and the Rika spell. You're going to banish the Kamakiri here and then after that you're going to activate the Rika spell. Now before you do anything with the spell, Link summon using the Link 3 and the Link 2 in order to go into Rika no Dayuga. After you go into your Link 5, now you activate the spell in order to special summon your banished Kamakiri. Now activate your Link 3's effect in Graveyard in order to return turn Marikube to death in order to special summon itself from graveyard. Now using the Link 3 you just summoned plus the Kamikiri, you're going to go into your Link 4 Kusari Gami. Kamikiri will once again trigger because it was used as Link material, reviving any reptile or Rika monster from your graveyard. Just like the first combo, it doesn't matter what you summon here, and the reason's gonna be because you're gonna use it as Link material plus the Kusari Gami in order to summon your Link 2 Alien Shock Trooper. Now you set your two traps, and as you can see we achieved the exact same setup that Snake gave us, but without actually opening snake rain, Nunu and Naya are undoubtedly the best snakes. As usual, I saved the best for last. To enter this variation, you need to open Snake Rain plus the Rika spell. Activate Snake Rain discarding any card in order to send Nunu, Naya, Curse, and Night Sword Serpent from deck to graveyard. Once you do this, Night Sword Serpent will trigger to special summon itself. Now you activate Curse, tributing the Night Sword Serpent in order to special summon itself as well. Curse is going to trigger on summon in order to revive Naya. Now activate Naya's effect in order to add Ogdoadic Daybreak to hand. At this point, you're going to activate Nunu's effect in graveyard in order to special summon 
summon herself. Now overlay Nunu and Naya in order to go into your rank 4 King of the Feral Imps. Activate King of the Feral Imps in order to add Serpentine Princess to hand. Now you're gonna go ahead and activate Ogdoatic Daybreak. This is going to tribute the curse, and as you know this will allow us to summon 4 Ogdoatic tokens to the field. Now we're gonna use King of the Feral Imps plus 2 of the tokens in order to go into Cosmic Slicer Zero. Cosmic Slicer is going to add the Planet Pollutant Virus to hand. Now we're gonna activate Daybreak's Graveyard Effect, returning Night Sword Serpent to deck, and then sending Raika Tokage to Graveyard. Now use your 2 remaining tokens in order to Link Summon into the Link 2 Raika. The Link 2 Raika is going to revive the Tokage that we just sent to Graveyard. Once you Special Summon Tokage, use itself plus the Link 2 in order to go into Noosh. Noosh is going to banish 2 cards in order to add the Trap for Disruption. Just like before, we're gonna go ahead and Normal Summon the Serpentine Princess. Now we're gonna activate the Link 2's effect in Graveyard in order to return the Serpentine Princess to deck. This is going to summon the Link 2, and it's also gonna trigger Serpentine Princess because it was returned to deck, allowing us to special summon Marikube from deck. Since we already opened the spell, we're going to use Marikube to add Kamikiri and Tokage, then immediately banish Tokage. Now special summon Kamikiri by returning Tokage to deck. At this point, you're going to use your Link 2 and your Link 3 to go into your Link 5 no Dayuga. Once you do this, activate the Link 3 in Graveyard in order to return the Marikube to deck, special summoning back the Link 3. Now we're going to use the Link 3 and the Kamakiri to go into our Link 4 Kusari Gami. Kamakiri is going to activate in Graveyard in order to revive a monster. Now this is where it gets juicy. We're going to activate the spell in order to revive any Raika monster. Now we're going to use the monster we just revived plus the monster we revived earlier off Kamakiri in order to go into Alien Shock Trooper. This is absolutely your best setup. Cosmic Slicer and your Link 4 will make it so your opponent can only activate monsters in Graveyard. Also the Raika no Dayuga will destroy 2 monsters on our opponent's field. Plus of course the trap which will destroy two additional cards. Most people will absolutely surrender to this combo. I ruined many people's day by locking them out of monster effects using reptiles. Another deck that can completely ruin someone's day is the plant deck. Check out my Aromage Son Avalon combo guide on screen if you want to learn how to plant all over people's faces. Like and subscribe to support the channel and become a member right now to choose the next deck that I review and to use exclusive emojis that look cool as shit. I'll also give you a sick shout out in my videos and don't forget to watch out and stay safe.